bagel jam protein shake is an elite post-workout meal and I will hear nothing said against that it's also my birthday today so you're not allowed to disagree with me I am three months into a bulking phase right now here is a picture of my prep post prep without the tan with a bit more weight put on and then where I'm at right now here is also a picture of the end of the last bulk that I did aka the start of my prep now the interesting thing about that photo where I look like a bloated mess is I'm 64 point oh no wait I'm yeah I'm 60 four and a half kilos in that photo and I'm 64 and a half kilos now in this photo the difference is huge and I probably don't even need to point that out right so I think at this point it's safe to say that I've got my head around bulking and how to definitely not do it and how to definitely do it and I'm not going to say that my post prep phase has been perfect but it's clearly worked now one topic that gets brought up a lot online and to be honest I see like every week with my own coaching clients is that phobia around bulking as a trans guy. Now I would argue that most guys regardless of whether they're trans or not have some level of fear around bulking right. The idea of a bulk is to gain as much muscle as possible not just to gain as much weight on the scale. Those two things aren't necessarily going to correlate. You can have someone that gains 10 kilos and, in the nicest way possible, looks like a bloated mess, aka me at the start of the year. But you could also have somebody who gains 3, 4 kilos and you can see that the majority of it is lean muscle. Therefore, just pushing that scale isn't really the number one goal of a bulk. In this video, I'm going to dive into five things to consider and think about when it comes to bulking, which can apply to most people but especially for trans guys who are looking to gain size. The first point and honestly the most important is to make sure that you are actually in a position where it's appropriate to bulk and if I'm being honest with you most people that come my way aren't. Like a lot of the time people will come to me and they will have that goal of I want to gain muscle and it's like that's cool but right now we need to take off some body fat first so that you are in the best, most optimal and also most healthiest place in order to gain more muscle. Now that's not to say that by switching our attention over to burning fat, you're not gonna build any muscle because there's more to it than that. We know that you can lose fat and gain muscle at the same time, but you're certainly not gonna gain as much as if you were, yes, just in a bulk, but it's gonna be worth it long-term. Even if you do the leanest of lean bulks, you are going to gain some body fat, it's inevitable. So if you're already going into that bulk with quite a high level of body fat, you're only gonna add on more, which means that when you then go to cut down in the future, you've got to do a longer cut and therefore the risk of losing muscle, like more muscle, is higher. On top of that, just from a health point of view, yes, there are limits to this, but the lower your body fat, the healthier you're gonna be. Again, there's limits to that when you're 5% body fat, obviously not a healthy place to be. But from a body fat point of view, somebody who is 15% body fat is healthier than somebody who is 25% body fat. So first of all, it is just a case of making sure that you are in an appropriate place to start a bulk. If not, drop some body fat first and then come back to that bulking phase afterwards. Secondly, it's about being realistic about the surplus that you're going to put yourself in. So by this point, I think we all know that when it comes to dieting, we're putting ourselves into a calorie deficit. But when we're bulking, we're putting ourselves into a calorie surplus. But for most people, it's better to look at it from a weekly point of view as opposed to daily. When we're bulking, we're going to be a little bit more loose with our food choices. When we're dieting, we can say no to meals out with family and we tend to just be a lot more strict in our mindset. But when it comes to bulking, those shackles kind of get removed. We find ourselves saying yes to everything. And all of a sudden, our weekly total of calories is a lot higher. Not just because we're aiming for a higher number, but because all of a sudden we'll have some quote-unquote off-plan meals or some untracked days. Now, that's absolutely fine. But if you've already worked out your calories so that you're in a calorie surplus 
and then you go and eat even more on top of that, the surplus all of a sudden just becomes too big and that's where that excess fat gain is gonna come from. In the past, I've been aiming for 3000 plus calories a day, but that didn't take into account the fact that I was probably having two untracked meals a week, going out with friends and family, etc. So that's made that surplus even greater. And that was one of the reasons why I just gained so much weight in previous books. So here's what I've been doing differently this time around. The days that I'm tracking my calories, I actually track maintenance. And then I allow myself to have one to two untracked meals a week, which as a weekly total is pushing me into that surplus. And it's just enough surplus to see myself grow, but it's not so much of a surplus that I'm just gaining a load of body fat. And this is also an approach that I like to take with a lot of my clients. When it comes to bulking, a lot of them want to be able to still go out and have food with friends, family, and of course they should. They're not athletes, right? We want to be able to go out, have a good time, whilst also improving our physique. So this might be something that you want to consider. Instead of throwing yourself into a daily surplus, do it as a weekly surplus and have days where you're at maintenance and days where you're slightly over. And from there, you should find that you're still going to be in a bulk. Number three is about being realistic with where you're at right now in terms of your ability to grow muscle. So this one is specific to trans guys because there's going to be guys that are watching this that are on testosterone and then trans guys that aren't. Now, without wanting to state the obvious, the people that are on testosterone that have got a higher T level are of course going to be able to build more muscle. Now, that's not to say for one second that if you aren't on testosterone that you're not going to gain any muscle. Females don't take testosterone, or most females don't take testosterone, and they still go to the gym to build muscle. It's just that they don't build anywhere near as much as guys who have got a testosterone level that is within healthy range. So again, it's about being realistic about what to expect. It could be that you're actually doing really well and gaining a really good level of muscle, but based on your circumstances. That context is really important. And I fully appreciate that one can be super disheartening. I got into the gym when I was 14 years old. I actually got into it before I even knew that I was trans. It wasn't until I was 17 that I started testosterone. So I was training for three years and really in terms of muscle growth, seeing pretty small levels of gain, right? I was lucky because I just enjoyed the gym. For me, the physique part of it is kind of separate to it. I love the gym and I would still go even if someone said to me, from tomorrow, you can't build muscle. But I understand that for a lot of people, their sole reason for being there is just to build muscle and, and get fitter. So I fully appreciate that what I've just said there can feel super disheartening. But again, it doesn't mean that you're not gonna see physique progression. It just means that you've got to be realistic with the kind of physique you're gonna be able to come out the other side with. Number four is about how you're tracking your progression. So in my opinion, it needs to be in this order. Measurements, photos, scale weight. Take your measurements every one to two months. Take physique photos every one to two weeks. Scale weight, you can take it daily, but this is the last thing that we want to worry about. And here's why. If your measurements are growing and you're looking bigger in your photos and your body fat levels don't look like they're rising at insane levels, even if the scale is hardly moving, you don't need to eat more. And this is where I've gone wrong in the past. I've not taken photos anywhere near often enough, probably done them like once every three months. I've not really focused on measurements. All I've done is looked at the scale and I've been trying to push for like 0.5 to even one kilo gain a month. And that's just been my sole focus. And by just focusing on the scale, I've not been focusing on what's most important and that's how I'm looking. <laughs> and again, that's why towards the beginning of the year where I've come out of a really long bulk and I just look like a mess. It's because all I've done is focus on pushing the scale. I've taken photos every three months. I've noticed that I'm getting tubby and I've thought, well, the scale's going up at a good rate, so I'll just keep on going, even though I look like shite. <laughs> so measurements, photos, scale weight. If these first two things are looking good, and they're going up, don't worry about what this is doing. If the scale isn't moving, and the measurements aren't, and you still look the same in the photos, then by all means, yeah, you probably need to eat more. And lastly, it's about remembering that fat gain is a normal part of any bulk, right? For anyone. But I know that as a trans guy, 
you focus in on those areas that you dislike the most. Right? All of a sudden we start getting the tape measure out and we're looking at our hips, we're looking at our glutes, we're focusing on those areas that we hate and we see a slight change in those areas, maybe they've expanded like a tiny little bit, which is inevitable for anyone, but we start freaking out and thinking that it's just us that's experiencing this and I can assure you, it isn't. When you see something on yourself every day, it's very easy to hyper-focus on that area. I'll have clients send through photos to me and say, I swear my hips are getting wider, my glutes are getting wider, whatever, during a bulk. And we put them next to the last set of photos that they took like a month ago, and there's next to no difference. But because they're hyper-focusing on that area to them, it's getting like this much wider every single day when it's just not the case. So make sure that you are actually in a position to start a bulk. If not, switch your attention to fat loss. I know it's probably not as exciting, but it will be worthwhile in the long run. Number two is to be realistic about your surplus. You probably don't need to be in a 300 calorie surplus every single day, but as a weekly total, if you're having a couple of untracked meals, you're probably gonna be fine to just stick to maintenance on all the other days. Number three, the one that I always feel like the bad guy for saying, but you gotta be realistic about what your ability is right now to grow muscle based on what your testosterone levels are. Measurements, photos, scale weight, always in that order. Focus on those first two things. If they look good, don't worry about what the scale is saying. And lastly, and probably the hardest one, remember that fat gain is a normal part of any bulk. Yes, there's limits to that. We don't wanna be gaining loads of body fat, but you are gonna gain some body fat. It's inevitable. Try and think long-term and remember that you can burn off any excess body fat that you put on at a later point. So hopefully that helped. I am now gonna go and get in the shower because I decided that just sitting down and filming this video post legs was what to do and my hands are sticky from the jam on my bagel. I'll see you all in the next one.